I hear from journalists all the time that meetings and email are the two biggest offenders when it comes to getting in the way of actually getting work done, actually reporting and telling the stories that we need to deliver to our audiences, to figuring out how to tell more interesting and different types of stories, which when you're looking at journalism today, that kind of innovation and, and reimagining things is really important. And when you're spending your 40 hours at work just kind of buried in emails and going to meetings, you're not really thinking beyond the day-to-day, minute-to-minute things that you have to do that day. I'm Katie Hawkins-Gar. I'm the Digital Innovation Faculty Member at the Pointer Institute. I teach journalists and newsrooms all sorts of things, um, including social media, audience engagement, mobile and social trends. But then I also do a lot of work on newsroom culture, which I think is really important. When you're talking about digital innovation, you have to address the culture in a newsroom. When you talk to journalists, the general consensus is, is that meetings are a necessary evil, uh, that a lot of um, decisions happen and, and sometimes work gets done in meetings, but that they're just run pretty poorly. Um, and so I think um, by looking at how to run meetings better, uh, you can make them more productive, maybe shorter, and quite possibly get rid of some of your unnecessary meetings. I led a small team at CNN and we had several meetings, you know, a morning meeting that we went to, we had a weekly team meeting, and then we'd have um, impromptu and some kind of regular long-term brainstorm meetings. And we were in some good meeting habits, but in a lot of ways there were, there were some, some bad habits we had gotten into that I think uh, that happens often. Um, when you're in a bad meeting habit where you know it's low energy or the same people dominate the conversation and other people aren't speaking up, I think that's a good opportunity to shake things up. So um, in my case, our meetings were going way too long. Uh, we, you know, all liked each other a lot and, you know, we would joke and have fun conversations and our meetings were kind of fun, but it was just sort of felt like you were hanging out with your friends and we didn't accomplish that much. So um, the two things that I, um, that I changed, one, I made sure we had a quick agenda for each meeting. It wasn't anything fancy, it was just something I emailed out and it was, you know, we've got an hour and here's how we're going to spend that hour. The other thing that I added to meetings was um, I would send out notes afterward. Um, and that was really important because it was important to say, okay, here are the things that we're, we discussed and here's what we're each responsible for. I think one of the ways I sold that idea of, hey, we're gonna shake up our meetings a little bit is I said, let's do this new format for a couple weeks and then I wanna hear from you guys. Is it working? Um, and that helped a lot. I wasn't saying this is absolutely the best way to run this meeting um, and I was really open to the team's feedback and ideas and I, I got some great feedback from them for how to keep the meetings kind of fun and flexible while also having a clear agenda and takeaways. When you are taking time away, valuable time away, from um, what people are supposed to accomplish in the supposedly eight hours that they work every day, it better be worth it, right? And I think as, as leaders, as coworkers, it's on us to speak up if um, meetings aren't super effective and, and aren't accomplishing what they're supposed to. There are so many emails. It sort of depends on the size of your organization. I know working at CNN, I would get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of email a day, which is sort of crazy, especially when you think about the volume of information you're already taking in, um, the amount of news. I mean, this year alone has been a crazy breaking news year. Um, and when you're trying to juggle all of that, tell stories, work with your team, and then also like make sense of this uh, flood of email, it gets really overwhelming. As an individual, you might feel powerless. You might be like, oh my gosh, there's so much email. But as an individual, uh, you can do a lot in terms of your own discipline when it comes to when to read email and how to sort through email and 
um, creating folders for certain amounts of email. You don't have to feel powerless. There might be some options that can help with reducing the overall volume of email. Number one, watch the reply all. <laughs> like it is not necessary to include all these people on a chain. One of my favorite email moves when people do this, I'm like, I respect you. You're kind of an email badass is when they say, great, thanks for looping me in. I'm moving you to BCC. So, so you've known that I'm responding to this person, but you're officially out of the conversation after this. Um, that's a pro move. Um, the other thing is as often as possible to end an email with some clear calls to action. When we're responding to emails at all hours of the day, we're doing several things. One, we're not allowing our brain to turn off from work, uh, which is uh, really detrimental when you think about burnout and you think about how often journalists are getting burnout in their jobs. If you're in a position of power, you're setting an expectation to your team that um, in order to succeed, you need to be able to respond to email at any given time. Um, if you're not in a position of power and you respond to email at any given time, then you're saying that, hey, take advantage of me. I'm willing to work at any given time. This is all easier said than done, right? It's really hard when you think about the 24 seven news culture, but having some boundaries set in place that you know, I'm not going to respond to email during these hours, that's my family time, and unless it's, if it's a huge emergency, you can call me. Um, that can be really effective at any level, whether you're the boss or an employee. It might seem silly to focus on tiny things like bad meetings and taming your inbox, especially when you consider everything that the news industry is facing today, right? Coming up with a viable financial model, um, avoiding burnout, dealing with the crushing amount of awful, horrible news going on around the world. Um, and so why are we talking about meetings and email? It seems so tiny compared to all of that. But I think it's important to focus on these things because they are things that can be changed um, and improved. And when they are changed and improved, ideally they will free people up to focus on the important work, right? So if we're not looking at email all hours of the day, well, that helps to address burnout a little. Um, and when we're not wasting our time in terrible meetings that don't lead anywhere, we are freed up to do some more innovative work and thinking that might help journalists come up with that new idea that gets some funding and you know uh, can help rethink the old tra tired traditional news model um, so focusing on meetings and email uh, it's small but it actually can make a huge difference and and i think that's what what we really hope to do here that um, we're hoping to make journalists lives just a little bit better so that they can better take care of themselves and better serve audiences